Today we are talking about the beloved N64 and the top 10 games that you should be playing on it with a twist. Welcome to Bits of Time, and today we are making a list of the N64 games, but there is a twist, like I said, and that twist is we are going to take the five games you must own slash play on the N64, and five games you should give a shot. So these are the games, maybe they're a little underrated, maybe they're hidden gems, but we made a list, each of us, and we're going to see if there's any overlap and we get to talk about some great N64 games. Oh, yes. And that lovely voice you were listening to is my brother, Michael, and I am Larry. This is our N64 5 and 5. So the mark, the exclusives maybe, the best games to play on the N64, and then the ones maybe you haven't heard of. Now, this, you've probably heard of them. But. This was tricky, man. Uh, I, I think we're going to start with the, the marketable or like the, the top five that you must play first. I'm curious if we agree on this list. I think... For me, I'm just going to get right into it. Well, I do have oh, to no, you don't. Okay. put a caveat. I made this list coming from 2022. What games should you go back to and play now? I think that's a big... Okay, so that's a key point because I think there is one game on this list that is interchangeable and it's going to be interesting to see what we decide to settle on. Okay, cool. <laughs> Sounds good. But Okay, so I didn't necessarily for my marketable rank them. It's just, these are the five games I think there's a mishmash. We can just kind of put them on. Did you? I kind of ranked them, but yeah, I think whatever happens, whatever happens. Okay, well, so my fifth that I have on this list is, and you can argue it, I think maybe there is another one that you could possibly put in this place, but Mario Kart 64. Oh, okay. I I just think from, so, and again, I like dabbling in lots of different genres, and I think this kind of hits that market where there's really not a better kart racer out there. Mm, okay. uh, for the N64. For the N64. I'm willing to say that maybe Diddy Kong is a possible. Okay, so I also have this on my list, but I have slash Diddy Kong Racing. And this is how I'm going to pitch it. If you are playing the N64 with a lot of people, play Mario Kart 64. Because the battle mode and the courses, you are going to have so much fun. That is the best battle mode out of any Mario Kart. Even to this day, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is awesome, but Mario... Kart 64 has the best battle mode. Okay, so can, can we put a pin in this one, though? Because I think based on what we do with the rest of the list, if I'm, let's say, trying to advertise these top five games to sell my system, I want to see what the rest of the games are because I think there might be a Mario-heavy theme, potentially. And if that's the case, maybe that's where I'd put in Diddy, Diddy Kong. Because Diddy Kong Racing has the strength of a single-player game. Yep. The amount of stuff you do in that game... Oh, that's a good game. That music, though. Oh, man. Okay. Well, I'm just going to get it out of the way because we're talking about this already. Super Mario 64. Super Mario 64 has to be on this list. (laughs) To me, it's number one. I think it's like Mm. the best game on the N64. It, you know, a lot of people think the camera's all wonky, and we've talked about that before. And it's so amazing that they knocked out of the park on their first 3D iteration. It feels so good, especially on the N64 controller, that analog mm. for Mario moving around. Ugh. Well, and I think that's that's why maybe the game, some people talk about it being a little weird. It, you, it was clearly built with that analog uh, stick, the single one in the middle in mind. His movements are very good with that. Mm. I obviously have my complaints with the cameras like you mentioned. A lot of people do, but yeah, I, I think this is a synop- unanimous number one. I would say number two pick, but... Okay. Yeah. And I think, you know, it does still look a little bit uglier now. The worlds might not feel as big as they did when you were a kid if you grew up playing this. But man, it still feels just as good. And And if this game doesn't exist, who knows where we're at with Mario nowadays. Exactly. And the variety of different levels in this game are so good. And the concept of just running around that castle, finding all the secrets, it is a top tier game and it has to be on this list. Okay. Uh, Let's have you jump in and say one. Okay, <laughs> this one, oh man, I had so many. Okay, you can't go off shoot though. Like you look like you had the face of like, okay, I'm gonna try something that's a little out of. Well, that's it, the it, next five. It, it kind of is. I had so many runner ups for this last spot. I guess would mine be, and I finally came down to it. It's Mario Party Three and Mario Party Three. Everybody talks about one because you got the blisters on your <laughs> hands from rotating that freaking <laughs> mini games. Yes. And then, I, have, I have reverse blisters because I burnt myself over Memorial Weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yep. And then everybody thinks about two in their costumes. Like every single board you went to, you change out costumes. 
I think three is hands down the best one. Like it's not even close. The board wise, so much better. A lot of them in two, like you get stuck in the beginning of the board because you land on something and it brings you back. And I just don't like that about Mario Party games. But three, you got Waluigi, which is always good. I think he was in two. But the boards in three are the best. And they have the reverse mushroom, which is like OP and I love that (laughs) thing. So you just roll it. So the star pops up behind you. Roll it. Get another star the next turn. So here's my takeaway from this. So I kind of thought when I was looking at this list that you might add this. I feel like there needs to be an either or. Maybe there's enough room in your list. To me, the two that I had battling each other and Mario Party's not on my list, but I kind of thought you might, was Super Smash Brothers. Oh. And I was like, I feel like you have to advertise potentially one of those two. So if I'm thinking of this in a 22 lens, Ultimate exists. I know that Super Mario Party, or yeah, Super Mario, Mario Party All-Stars. Yeah. Superstars, whatever the frick it's called. (laughs) The game that went on my list. Yeah. Uh, That has boards from 3 and has some things, but I think the charm of 3 still exists where Super Mar- Super Smash Brothers is pretty clunky nowadays on the N64. Agreed. Uh, it yes. doesn't have those, like, you know, the charge attacks at all. And that feels very strange going back to. But, I mean, you can still have a lot of fun with mm-hmm. Super, and Super again, Smash Brothers. And, and so I think what's going to end up happening here is, like, we have our lists. We'll have to come to a consensus probably for bits of time here. So it might get a little... So we have two now. That is, we got to go back and forth yep. on. Okay, okay. But I, I, what's your sell for Super Smash? I, I just feel like it is such a great way. And maybe this is the argument to Mario Kart slash Diddy Kong. It's such a great way of advertising your entire roster. And it was like, it's kind of, it's fun to go back and see like basically what started this genre. Yeah. Like in no other uh, competitors ever come close. Like Super Smash Brothers is the cream of the crop. Yes, they're better now. But. But again, you could argue that with a lot of the games on this list, it's just, it's just these were their first iterations a lot of the time. And for me, it's just that battle system, playing with your friends, getting to play some characters that you don't always get to mainline all the time is just so entertaining. Now, again, obviously the roster has grown tremendously since then. <laughs> just a little. <laughs> but it, th- there's something about like that, like a fighter, that type of thing, that it's, it's so unique to have such a treasured game like that on your console. So, and again, but then I could also argue the Mario Party side, right? That's also the get your friends together. It's a different style of game. Both party games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll keep, let's keep going because I want to see if there's more overlap in some of the other games. All right. So, this would be my fourth pick, I guess. And I don't know if I list. Because you also have Mario 64. Yeah, exactly. And that was my number one is uh, Zelda or Green of Time slash Majora's Mask. Okay, so it's really funny you did the slash, right? So I was thinking to myself this, because I have Majora's Mask as my number two on the list. Okay. And so, or not Majora's Mask, uh, or Green of Time. The reason I slashed Majora's Mask on there was I was almost wondering, there's a lot of people who actually think that game in a weird way tops Ocarina because of its specialty. My thing is I'm wondering if the time mechanic in that game it's hard to Turned, advertise that. And it turns off a lot of people, yeah. I would say. And so, but again, we all know if you listen to season one, I'm not a Zelda fan, but I can also step back and look. I mean, Ocarina of Time is famous beyond words. It's <laughs> yeah, such yeah. a great game. Yeah, it's, and it's just... It would be almost dumb to have a top five list and not have from N64 not have that one on. Yeah, that's my thing. And I look at the port on the 3DS of Ocarina of Time is really good. And Majora's Max one is pretty good overall. They do nerf the swimming mechanic when you're a Zora. So that's why I'm like, oh, maybe I lean towards Majora's because I like this one. But the bomber notebook in the 3DS version is better on uh, for Majora's Mask. So I don't really know. I could go both ways. And now you can play it on Switch Online. But you have to play a Zelda game. And I almost, it's just kind of pick your preference on that one. Yeah. Okay, so... I would lean then for us Mario 64, Super Mario 64, Legend of Zelda, let's just say Ocarina of Time with the caveat Majora's Mask. Those two are absolutely on the list. Yeah, we're in agreement there. We're not going to fight over that one. All right. What's your last one then? This is, I think, the trickiest one for me on the entire list because this is in either or as well. And I think you probably already know what it is. To, uh, or maybe you don't. I can't decide oh. what is the more marketable version. Goldeneye? Or perfect dark. or perfect dark, and I have I literally was l- thinking about it last night. I've had this list done for about a, a couple days now. I was thinking it again last night. Like I can talk myself in and out of both of these. Mm-hmm. I would argue 
the music in the campaign in GoldenEye is better. I would agree, yes. The multiplayer, the custom ability, probably the overall multiplayer fun you can have with your friends is perfected and better on Perfect uh, Dark. I don't know if I agree with that, though. Really? I think the customization, yes. So you think the multiplayer is even... Some of the maps on... Golden Eye. Yes, are no. Fantastic. I would I would argue the maps are better, and I even say like I have a lot of memories with like the Game Shark cheek where you break through the wall. And yeah. Like, even, <laughs> like marketing wise, attaching yourself to a Bond movie, I just think makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I think some people when they hear the word Golden Eye, they probably think of the N sixty four versus the yes. movie. I yeah, mean. exactly. <laughs> it's such a staple to the time. Now, the reason it's not on my list is because I talked about going back in twenty twenty two. The control scheme is going to be very, very hard to relearn because modern shooters have changed so much and going back to the single analog stick is going to be very hard. Yes. But we did go back to Perfect Dark, I don't know, a couple of years ago for you and I, and it was harder, but we got to the point where we started getting good yeah. at it. So if you had a bunch of people, like four, three buddies, two buddies, whatever, come over and try and play it, you could learn it again. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It's just, it feels like to me, and I understand like the controls aren't fantastic anymore, but if you're going to talk about the N64 as a whole, it's hard not to have I one know. of those two. So I, that's where it didn't make my list because I'm looking at it from a control aspect of 2022, yeah. but I, I, it was really hard not to put it on the list. So okay. I had it on the list right before, I think as of yesterday. Okay. And then I put Mario Party 3 on there. And I'm rethinking that whole scenario again. So. <laughs> so I guess then just as we get closer here, I would say this. I would lean towards putting GoldenEye over Perfect Dark. Okay. I, I think I am in agreement with you. And again, I think I've seen this somewhere, but the menu music and just like the casual music in GoldenEye has no business being as good as it is. <laughs> it's <right>. so good. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh. Yeah, oh, it's so good. Uh, so my last game on this list, uh, out of order, it doesn't matter, is Star Fox 64. This game still holds up. It is the best Star Fox game, hands down. And what it does well is replayability and doing different missions, kind of like in GoldenEye where you had different objectives. This one you have different objectives per level that take you to a different planet and a different route. And I, you know, it has multiplayer, which is we messed around with when we were kids and it was fun. It's not the best multiplayer, but, you know, add on multiplayer. You can't go wrong. So the, the funny thing about this one is I think out of principle, like I just hated the Star Fox experience you made me go through in season one. <laughs> that, But again, I did even bring up how much I enjoyed Star Fox 64. This would be like six on my list of games here, oh. but I absolutely could see it jumping in and replacing... I mean, any one of them, it just depends on how many Mario games we have that are thrown in this list. So this is going to be the tricky part. I'm willing to put a dagger down and say, obviously, we agreed Super Mario 64. We agreed Legend of Zelda. I really think GoldenEye should be on this list. Yeah, and I think the one you, well, yes, okay. It would be nice to have a shooter, just to recommend, say, hey, the yeah. 64 did have good shooters. And even. we have to have a racer because the N64 in general has really good racers, but it's Mario Kart. You right? think so? Or it's Diddy Kong. Well, uh, like, it's one of those two. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, which one? We <laughs> I think it decides what are we keeping between so, Mario Party or Star Fox, and I right away I go Star Fox. Okay. All right. So then I would say Mario Kart 64. What a banger list. I mean, think, okay. So I, I talk about advertising system. I'm speechless. I couldn't even get words out of my mouth there. <laughs> <laughs> so our list is Super Mario 64, Legend of Zelda, or Karina of Time. Goldeneye 007, or 007 Goldeneye. Just I actually don't yeah. know. I think it's Goldeneye 007. Yep. Mario Kart 64 and Star Fox 64. I mean, my goodness. That is a list. And that doesn't count like, you know, before I, because <laughs> I might spoil a game that you might pick. So we'll go back to that list when we talk about it. There's so many good games on the N64. There's a lot of games that do not hold up nowadays. Goldeneye might be one of those in that regard, but mm -hmm. all those other ones, mm, well, and again, I don't want you to speak any further because now that's exactly what we're going to do. It's like, here, we got you sold to buy the council. I mean, that top five, you can probably put up against any top five, any council ever. Yes. Now it's time to kind of go a little wow, more. Yeah, per maybe. That, yeah. I, that might be something we have to we'll look at. We'll be doing this one more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have to look at that. Huh? Interesting. You know what would be fun is once, as we build this list up, we go through like all the different councils. Then at the end of it all, like start like maybe battling throw them, them out, battle yeah. them together. <laughs> Ooh. So that's our initial five. Now it's five games you should give a shot at. This you should was try. It. So freaking hard. To I, <laughs> it's either you know back in the day maybe you go rent this one at the Blockbuster or the Hollywood Video. But right now 
These are games that, you know, you, if you see them on Nintendo Switch Online or you see them at some retro gaming store or uh, eBay, and you're like, you know what? This is mm. a good price. I'm going to take this or play it. So I'm going to just write out front. Or go oh. to a library like me. That'll I am, I'm the library of renting retro video games. I will lend you a game. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Not actually a physical library. Yeah, I don't like, think they hold that. Yeah. <laughs> Find say. somebody that's a retro collector and then they'll be like, can I play this game? Okay. Yeah, I will say this. My list, I don't have really in order here. It's just these are five games I recommend. It depends on the genre. It depends on what I'm feeling. I have strong feelings about all these games just in different ways. Okay, interesting. So I, I'm going to, and by the way, if you're hearing a dog occasionally bark, you know, we're not going to like muzzle the dog. <laughs> we want it free loving, free living. So just hopefully Jazzy. it doesn't come. So anyways, going on, I would say my number, the number five that I have on this list here you mentioned it multiple different times, both in season one, and then we just did one of our other episodes that we record. Not sure when it's coming out. But humor is really, really hard to do in video games. And there is a game, there is a game that w- when I think back to it, I just chuckle. It makes me smile. I watched some more videos on it again recently just to kind of see the humor is dirty, it's crude. But I have just said you need to experience this game. Conquer's Bad Fur Day. That's not where I thought you were going, but all right, all right. Where did you go? I don't know. Right. I was like, are you going to do Paper Mario? No. <laughs> Conquer's Bad Fur Day is such a uniquely done game. And it's just, like you mentioned it, like you kind of stole my thought on that. Humor's so hard to do. It's so, and when it pops up in a game, it's a unique experience. It's like, you, you, should, you should check this yeah, out. Do you think this humor still hits? I, I don't know. It's, there's a lot of raunchy humor in this game. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, even the multiplayer mode in the oh game is the, so addicting. The, the sniper like, mode, yeah. yeah. The, the sniper <laughs> mode is so good. The in the in the right between the, the yes, the subtle dialogue that is said between the characters in these multiplayer modes is so fun. I guarantee you, you will laugh. Like it's just, it's a good time. And it's like it's a, it's such a. We don't have anything like it nowadays, really. No, and what's interesting about it, it parodies so many things in pop culture mm-hmm. that. Okay, does that have an impact on people today in 2022 if they didn't grow up pl- oh, doing I'm, some things? Like, I'm willing yeah. to bet you, like a Benjamin, that there are things that would get this game canceled nowadays. Oh. <laughs> so I'm, I'm not saying I condone everything. Yeah. It's just, it is a fun romp into something that Whatever we just do it not was. see. Yeah. yeah. That was the, one of the most unique platformers. And I'm going to, you know, I have an order, but this fits really nicely. So speaking of games that I don't think work today because they all their jokes and weirdness is focused on a particular time period. So the nineties mm-hmm. and <laughs> my game is Gex enter the gecko <laughs> for the N64. It was fu- it's also funny. on the PS one, but yeah. okay. that, that's on game pass. They back. Like, I always, I always pass by it. What? No, maybe I'm thinking of, no, I'm the, thinking of blinks, not hey. Gex. <laughs> <laughs> totally different game. So I initially wrote this down as like a joke and I was like, you know what? There was something about this game that made me want to collect all the TV remotes. Because this game, you go into different like TV stations. Do you remember this at all, me playing this? I'm, I'm trying to... While you're doing it, I'm going to look it up. Because I feel like as soon as you brought up the TV station, something popped in my head. I just want to see if the visual in my head is correct. So the level variety is... There's a, there's a Titanic level. So that's like a 90s reference. Maybe that's early 2000s. I don't even remember anymore. But the, it's goofy. But the platform is actually really good. And if you like the collect-a-thons, like from Mario and stuff. I think yeah. you're going to enjoy <laughs> yeah. this a little bit. Uh, it's got so much humor that I don't think would land today because of how long ago it was. But if you're somebody a little bit older like us, I think you should give it a shot. And I think it's still... No, I haven't put my hands on the controller with this game in a very long time. But I think it still probably holds up in a strange way. It's a James Bond gecko. I love him in the yeah. little suit there <laughs> with the bow tie. And I remember the final boss in this game. There, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's one perspective switch where it like goes into first person and he's shooting at you and you have to dodge it from his perspective and oh, it's, it's pretty interesting i feel like uh 90s games in general was the era of people were just throwing things onto a whiteboard and trying to see what stuck and we're getting refinement out of games nowadays mm-hmm. but the creativity you could maybe argue is lessened in some eras or areas and there's something about there's just such a weird amalgamation of just nonsense in games in the 90s that you don't see anymore no yeah like this game 
I didn't play the first one, but I believe this is the second. I, th- I believe there's three on the N64 off the top of my head. Maybe there's two. I don't know. doesn't matter. It's just watch a video on it. And if you think it looks cool, give it a shot. I'm just saying if it, this is probably still really cheap, I assume. Yeah. So okay. check it out. All right. Uh, my next pick in, this is a unique one. I know you'll remember this game, but it's, I think it's never been done better. And it's Tetris done correctly. Oh. And for me, Tetrisphere <laughs> is, is so strange. It is the, I never would have in my life guessed that this would have been like an entertaining, fun game to play. But especially like the multiplayer, when you're playing against someone on the same sphere, it slowly gets closer and closer. It, the, the way, and it's hard to explain. And you kind of—that's what I was going to talk about—is the way that the camera zooms. It, there's like it. There's almost an awe factor of like, oh no! It, it, like that's the timer that like you start freaking out. You get stressed. You're like, no, 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 no. Yeah, because before you know, on Tetris, it would slowly the blocks would go up to the top, and you know, if you get to that wall, I'm done. Well, this one. It, the camera perspective yeah. keeps moving in so it's, it, and it's, it's a different feeling it, it's so in it there's not much more to talk about it's tetris on a sphere and but it's you can play against a buddy and it's just tense it's fun there's a lot of like back and forth i could see just lots of people trying to really play this making me want to just like bust right like right now no, like, it, it is such a fun experience that i'm kind of shocked that they haven't gone back to the yeah, wall on that. One. I know because we have Tetris Effect now, which is yeah. a brilliant game yeah. VR and all that. It's a different, but it's true. We don't have this. I would love change. to see Tetrisphere come back. Oh. I would and, love. And it, it's kind of cool because you get to pick your character. You never really see your character, but this little weird robot yeah. looking guy. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's like, this is cool. Like, yeah. And that is a game that, yeah, doesn't it? It's probably really cheap. So if you're a collector out there, go for it. It's probably still cheap now, even <laughs> video game prices are crazy right now. Yeah. So I have that in my collection, but find somebody, play that game. You will have fun. I, I, yeah, I just I recommend it. It's, it's just a great fun pick. game. That's a great pick. Thank I you. forgot about that one. Thank you, thank you. Well, that makes me happy. I, I snuck one in on you. All right, so my next recommendation for a game that you should try out is Battle Tanks. Yeah, yeah. this is the one. It was like, this is number six. I was almost going to throw this one on. So, I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> love it. This game's multiplayer was so much fun, and... The story concept is really freaking weird. So basically, the, the fertility rate of women dropped super hardcore. <laughs> and so then the world went to apocalypse and everybody is now fighting over queen lords and trying to protect the women. So they're basically gone into tribalistic and blowing up people in tanks. It's super <laughs> weird. You're going to rescue your girlfriend, I think, across the country. But the gameplay is super good. Yes. Like, obviously, they're going to have a little bit of wonky controls because you're on the N64 controller. But... It's hard, it's fun, the level variety is pretty good, and it's just tanks battling. I think Global Assault expanded the amount of tanks you had, and I can't... Hmm. I, I think yeah, we spent yeah, most of our time in one, we but... Did, yeah, we definitely spent a lot more time You in see one. either one, pick it up, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. Plus, you get to pick your tanks, change color with each tribe you do, and yep. they have some weird comic book stills in the story. Like, it's it's a game. You need to check it out. That would be, yeah, that's, it's just... <sighs> Such a good game. Right? It's there were so many fun like mul- remember, yeah, and the campaign was pretty fun yeah. too. Actually, yeah. I know, and yeah, there's multiplayer in the N64. I mean, that's what that system was made to do. And so maybe we have a little bias coming in because there was three of us brothers growing up, so we always had people to play with. But play this game, invite people over, invite a stranger over. I don't care, your neighbor, bond. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next one on my list is actually my. I would argue my third favorite sports game all time. Uh, Maybe my number two favorite sports game. And it's something we direly need back in today's day and age. And that's NFL Blitz 2000. Uh, (laughs) I, you know, the the really funny thing about this game was I recently was like, you know, do, do I still like that game as much as I thought? I went, I remember going on YouTube like a week or so ago and I started watching some just older footage of the gameplay. As soon as it played, the sound effects, the music, the title, everything clicked right back into place. I'm like, yep, this is it. The fact that you're sumo dropping on guys, <laughs> kicking people. You're j- it's just that game is everything that is fun. It's the arcade style sports game that we don't Super get f- in yeah. the Madden NFL blandness of today. It's very fast paced, quick. Oh. Just the rules are it's a uh, you can like it without being a sports yeah. fan because it's just ridiculous. And the thing that's fun for me, though, too, is like 
imagine seeing that style game with the graphics we have today. There's so much fun you can do. Don't worry about like the gigantic franchise modes. Cut all that stuff and do it more on the just weird and wackiness that happens on the field. There's so much room and it doesn't have to just be NFL Blitz. Do you know we had like do like I know we had some wild stuff with like basketball back in the day, but do soccer and hockey and like there's so much fun to be had. It's like it's such a fun experience. I remember laughing so much at the ridiculousness. It's just it's a fun time, and that's what a lot of these N64 games are. So yeah, uh, me and Kevin used to play this against each other all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's my other brother. Uh, one little side note. Apparently, which is kind of cool, on the Dreamcast version, so they have the VMU memory card, so they have that little screen, the controller. You can look at your plays on that, so you can kind of like oh, it really? doesn't pop up that's on the cool. screen, yeah. so you kind of have a little secrecy going on. That's so true. The, N64 was the er- one of the eras of screen cheating. Yeah, <laughs> that's screen true. Watching screen cheating. That's when we used to build the device <laughs> yeah the cardboard <laughs> the, the block to split the screen yeah <laughs> so good uh playing uh golden eye like that oh, getting yeah. super uh in depth with our creations of that oh good stuff good stuff my next game is a little game called mischief makers yeah okay i remember this one too yeah really i i, I so when i was looking and I, when i say i remember it i was looking it up and i remember seeing it i didn't play it that much okay but so this is sprite work uh so th- i would say the main criticism of this game is the controls and it uses the C buttons kind of move around a little bit, which a lot of shooters did, but this is a side scroller. And it's one of the few games that also uses the D pad, which is very, very limited in the N64 catalog. This game is awesome. I love it. The sprite work is so good. It's so goofy. Like (laughs) there are so many different levels and they take very short periods to beat. There's 52 levels. That's quite a few levels in this. And the creativity in these levels are unparalleled and it's just a goofy it's so japanese and just look at a screenshot and look at the characters in the game and you'll be like what is this <laughs> and i bought this game randomly and i was like and the reviews are pretty bad on it overall and i plan it's like why are people not liking this game mm. it's so good and it holds up so well you should go out and play this game okay it's like uh, there's theme songs like shake it shake it it's super weird <laughs> you you like games a weird strange like theme song yes i do oh my gosh and just play it i don't got anything else to play <laughs> this is a game you should go out and check out all right it's probably one of the top games on the n64 for you to check out oh well i mean this is your list <laughs> that's true all right so my next is technically the superior version is on the dreamcast so it's funny that you just brought up dreamcast that is really interesting uh, and but for me, a game that I and maybe you can quabble about like which one to recommend. Uh, I believe San Francisco Rush 2049. The, oh, the, nice! So for starters, the actual gameplay itself, the only annoyance I remember ever having is there's a weird spin out mechanic where if you don't land correctly off jumps, your momentum kind of gets killed a little bit. Yeah. Uh, outside of that, the battle park mode in this game and trying to just is that in two or, yeah, i think I'm, it might have been well it was in 2049 okay, but like true. uh they right. all kind of they all yeah it's i can't remember head. i think was it one or two that had the mountain dew collection oh my gosh i yeah. think that was one or two yeah. i don't know which, which was also great but the battle park to me was at its best and its soundtrack was at its best in san francisco rush okay and I so and again I was I, I literally did the same thing you did. I went online and I was like, okay, which one am I actually remembering correctly? And it was absolutely this one. The the just open arena where you just aimlessly drive around trying to score points, listening to the soundtrack. It's just this is such a jumps, man. Why oh. this is another example. I was complaining about Tetrisphere. Why hasn't it come back? Why don't we have this? Like yeah. And, and I think Forza tried something somewhat similar just recently. The, the Burnout games maybe a little sort bit. Of, yeah, We need this series back. Oh, my. I just remember looking for those keys in Mountain Dew cans. Like, yeah. just you, unlocking stuff. You know what would be fun, though, is, like, with the craft beer scene? Like, just start doing, like, craft beer collectibles instead. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, so. uh, this is a game I've want, been on my radar to go back to and just, yeah. like, invite you guys God, over. I would love to play this again. Just trying to collect everything. And yeah. Then, Maybe the racing's not even that good. It doesn't matter because trying to find everything well, is great. Well, here's the thing, right? The fact that I remember an issue with the racing makes me think it's probably atrocious nowadays, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I, I can't I can't say, but like I just this game's so gonna be cheap yeah. still, uh, if you're just looking for the cartridge. And again, if you're going in the mentality well, everything's so fast paced and quick. That was the beauty of the cartridge too. Like, yeah, it's just so quick. And I think 
what gets lost on us some days is I, I get in the same groove like, oh, I just got to beat the game. Like, that's what I do and then move on to the next. This one, you just mess around and have fun yeah. in. Like, the same thing we did in Super Mario 64. Not Super Mario 64. Well, yeah, that one too. But Mario Kart 64. We would just mess around on the levels and see, all right, if I do this jump, can I make it to the other side? Yeah. And, like, you yeah. know, the high uh, Royal's Peach ca- Castle. Or their, oh, well, yeah, yeah. Like, trying to go up that <laughs> jump so many times. And then oh, yeah, because you, like, you try and get glitched on, like, the, yeah. the warp spot. Oh, like, yeah. if you want to just take a night, an evening, and just mess around in these games. And I feel like Rush does a really good job of, all right, try and get this key. Try and go off this jump and grab it. And yep. Well, there were so many times I remember, and maybe it was in some of the other ones as well. You'd be doing the race, and you're like, okay, screw the race. i turn around to try and go, like, I got to collect that. How do I get that? <laughs> like, there's just, there's something about those style of games. And I think as kids, just the innocence of being a kid and playing these games is so much fun nowadays is like maybe we need a little bit of alcohol <laughs> just to help out a little bit. But it's like just getting a couple of buddies together and just playing these things. Or there, you know you're going to have nothing but a fun time playing it. But yeah, right. oh, that arena. Just trying to collect and get the high scores and trying to like beat your friends. Oh, loved it. All right. So my second to last game on this list is Snowboard Kids 2. And I you have... And, weren't you and our brother just talking about this game? Yeah, we yeah. were, which is funny, because he has no members of it. And I was like, we played this work. <laughs> uh, I have more memories of one. It seems like two does basically all, everything a little bit better, more variety. I think you could go either way and be fine. But I'm going to say two just because they have this weird walk-around mechanic, too, uh, that you go, uh, I think, in the, some village or something. I don't, okay. I don't even know if I, I might have played this game a little bit, but... Most of my memories are one. And I feel like the level variety in two changes up enough. I mean, you're eventually going to be snowboarding on grass and sand, just like in the first one. And the weird thing about this one is to do laps, Mm -hmm. you have to go to the end of the level and get into the lift and then go start over. So you're fighting to get into that small little section to get in the lift. (laughs) And, you know, it still has power-ups. You... So it's kind of like that Mario Kart theme, but this is a, another racer on the N64 that's definitely worth your time. I feel like like the snowboard style games, like because there was like 1080 snowboarding, yep. uh, there was SSX, like the, the yeah, tricky PS2, series yep. and stuff like that. Like I feel like there's a lot of those style games that we don't see as much that are successful. Like I know Steep tried to be yep. we have modern games, but we don't get a lot of that anymore. No, and obviously this one had to make enough money to make a sequel, so people bought enough. I think this is a very, very... Not, no, I don't want to use the word hidden gem, but you should play this game or find somebody who owns it and play some multiplayer. I think you're going to have a good time with it. I've, this is also another game that's on my list to revisit again. Yeah. Like so many games. Yeah. Okay. Well, then my final game on the list. <laughs> if you heard that, that was our dog trying to come in the door. And now she's in here. Okay. Yeah, she's like a velociraptor. Yeah. She jumps in. Uh, well, that's very off. fitting, Mike. <laughs> oh, is it? It's got to be Turok. Not dinosaur. Yeah. Uh, so he- here's the thing with Turok is I am a little leery on the fact that I'm wondering if the controls are a little quaky, possibly. Uh, they're not quaky. So, uh, and when we say quaky, we mean quake one that we yeah. talked about in season one. I played the first game again and it is hard to control a bit, but I got used to it. Pretty, yeah. Okay. Pretty quickly. So the thing is, is like the nostalgia factor for this series, the, like I-, I still like when you're like collecting the triangles, like I can just close my eyes and just. Here, there, like the sound effects in these games are so well done, and it, it's one of the series I'm beyond shocked in today's day and age we don't have something like this. Yeah, like, they did that uh, reboot remake thing yeah. in 2006 or something, Xbox yeah. era, and, Xbox 360. Well, in Turok, just in general, is like it's one of those experiences, like it's it's unique. Maybe there's a, an issue with like the main character and like some people having issues with it today, I don't know, but. I just, I, I love those games. It was always the, in a, especially like in Dinosaur Hunter, like you have the, you're hunting the dinosaurs, but then there's like the gorillas and like just the randomness of the game is just, there's always the factor of like, okay, what am I going to encounter next? What's the surprise? And it's a unique take instead of just shooting people. It's, it's just just a different style. It's fun. You get to shoot people too. Yeah, yeah. you do. You do. But it's like you get this variety. That pistol sound is yes. just stuck in my Well, head. and then and just like the the different upgrades, the sounds, the music, just, just when they when the guys die, like that haunt, that weird noise yeah. that they make. I don't know. It, it's such a unique game that it's like it's another. And that was kind of a common theme with my list was we just have so many games. Like, why are they now? Why are these series not coming back? Yeah, we did. Who has a, the rights? Like a remaster of those games on yeah. modern consoles. 
uh, if you had to pick which game out of the three, Turok Wars 2, I think... It would be really hard to like just. I mean, I think I'm probably most nostalgic about the first one. Oh, is it? Is you're it wrong? Two is the best. Is two the? I know you're, you're, you're throwing up the fingers on me. So Turok Two is that probably the? I feel like that one. One has that cerebral core, the thing that eats the brain. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. So I yeah, feel so like it, that's. I, well, that's, that's, a, a, that's two. Yeah, it's two. Okay. So then I'm completely misremembering then, which is not a shock. Uh, yeah. I don't know. There's just something unique there's a interesting place that style of game Turok fit that just we don't have anymore no. and i just if it holds i think so. for you know obviously we gave our marketing title games and stuff like that but for like a different take on a shooter this is a fun experience to kind of go jump into so yeah yeah i mean great pick i didn't really think about that i think that was on my marketing side like oh this is a tier below let's yeah. do it but i we've we've talked about that game before and maybe yeah, we should do that in a future season yeah i think during the quake episode at yeah, the end you think of turok when yes, you think of quake, yes which is what <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> so maybe we'll do one of those in the future season that could, that could be pretty fun my last game is mystical ninja starring goemon i assumed that would if you would have had me guess i would just say i think this is on your list yeah so one of the best games on the n64 it is a zelda like in a japanese take you run around a bunch of bigger towns doing objectives. The frame rate's not the greatest. The draw distance is not the greatest, but it's the N64. Who cares? You're going to have fun with this. It's super weird. There's four different characters you can play as, and they all play differently. And the concept is just so goofy. Just watch a video of it, and you get these big robot battles. It's, like, so strange. And one thing is there's a nice variety of dungeons that you explore, and they're okay. different, different objectives within each one. Uh, there is a sequel. And that is more of a 2D side scroller. I have yet to play that game. Maybe we will one day. And I think you could probably play either one of those and be fine. Uh, I think the second one's probably more expensive nowadays. But that one is also harder from what I've heard. But check out Goemon games. Okay. The Mystical Ninja. You, you definitely have talked highly about them. Yes. Play them. It's fun. And then I did just want to add because I wanted you to kind of. Uh, guess that maybe there was a certain game that would be on this list i just want to say because i live to consistently disappoint you uh i purposely didn't put pokemon snap on here it's oh. just to me that's just in the aura of if you bought an n64 you're just gonna have it so <laughs> just it, it just it's just floating out there uh, yeah that's a game that's floating may the memes continue <laughs> <laughs> man this was really difficult to do though like, yeah so i don't think we're gonna make a top tier list of those games no th- th- these are personal choices yeah so I would stand by all those games, go check them out, play them, emulate them, whatever you want to do, add them to your collection. But those are five, or those are 10 games you should play. Mm-hmm. Technically, that's 20 games. We technically talked about 20 games. Yeah. Well, well, not, not yeah, exactly. There's, there's, overlap. there's overlap. Yeah, yeah. So I want to hear your five on five list here. So let us know what you would pick. And I hope you find some new games to play, revisit some old classics, and maybe they'll come on your top. 10 games of 2022 23 who knows so go enjoy the n60 love our beloved n64 not everybody thinks that and that's okay no. but we grew up and that was one of our favorites so it's got to be our first five and five list what console will be next who knows hope you enjoyed your time with us 